Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the CDL Driving Academy podcast. And today's guest is super special to me. He's one of my dear friends, and we actually met here at Driving Academy. He was one of our students, and he's going to be sharing you his rags to riches story on how he is now a super successful business guy, and it all started with a spark of getting a CDL license. This man is truly on the road to freedom. He's more free than most people I know in this world, and we're going to figure out the secrets why he is the way he is, and how he got here. So listen in all the way to the end, because you're not going to want to miss this thing. How we doing, my friend? How you doing, John? Good to see you. Nice to see you, too. You're looking good. You getting buff? I'm trying. You That's know, it. You get, the, you get successful, you want to keep it, so you want to work out, stay in shape, eat right. That's true. Yeah. Now, just for people to kind of understand your level of success, uh, just five years ago, uh, to where you are now, if you were to kind of give us, like if five years ago on a scale of 1 to 10, where were you? And now, where are you on a scale of 1 to 10, financially and overall? I'd say five years ago, I was just starting out the business. Business now is six years old. So we were definitely, you know, job to job. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it took some time. It took some time to build the clientele. It took some time to get our name out there. So I wouldn't say we're at the bottom. We were at the, you know, the building stage. Mm-hmm. To now, where we've built our product, we built our brand, uh, we're known you know, throughout the New Jersey tri-state area. And uh, we do good work. So we constantly refer, constantly picking up new business. I'm hands-on. I'm on the job all the time. And I'd say we're from the the middle to the top. Nice. Very cool. So, like, right now, if you would probably start off, uh, when we first met, you are probably around, like, that three, four level, maybe? Yeah, maybe. And now you're probably closer to that uh, nine, ten? Maybe not a ten because you have high goals, but... Yeah, I'd say 10, I, I don't think you're ever going to reach a 10 because you're always striving to do a little bit better. Correct. But I, I'm definitely pushing a solid 9. Nice. And, you know, we're comfortable where we're at. So Ooh. That's it. Yeah. So let's tell everybody the story on how we met. So you wanted to get your CDL license, right? I needed to. I needed to get my CDL in order to get my crane license so I could actually drive the crane that I would be operating. Mm. And that process started at the One Stop Career Center in Elizabeth. I was at the time, uh, I wouldn't say unfortunately, I was at the time transitioning out of a halfway house back into society. Okay. So for me, getting, you know, a career goal and, you know, housing and, you know, licenses, all the things you need to be successful and be a regular citizen out here, that's where it started. You know, I had an opportunity at the roofing company I worked for in Newark, big outfit, union outfit, to be around cranes. Okay. And then when I see I said, man, this... It's a good job. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's like a big erector set you're playing with. You know, it's a lot of fun. That's true. So uh, you can't get the crane to the job. You know, not like they're going to give you a driver. So you really have to have your CDL. So that was. Was where, that the spark that, that happened? Yeah, that was a spark. And then, you know, like I said, well, I went to one stop. Uh, they gave me an option of your school or another school close to the area. I, I was required to go out and look at both of them before I made a decision. And uh, your school had the the computer generated driving the simulators. Yeah, yeah that mm-hmm. seemed a lot less scary than driving down Route Nine in Elizabeth. Were you scared before you started the process? I was tr- a little tre- a trepidation there, yeah. you know, because they're big trucks. Yeah, you know, I was eighty thousand pounds is yeah. not an easy thing. No, I and was, it, a lot of guys actually come in. Uh, we know that they're scared because we've been doing this a long yeah. time. So, but they try to they try to shy away from. No, I'm not scared. If you're not scared, you're crazy. Correct. Because I mean, anything could happen, and you you could kill somebody with that thing. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of responsibility. And you know, in the beginning, when I was training it, and your dad was next to me, and we were riding on Route Nine, and he was yelling at me and making yeah. me even more scared. <laughs> it, it was terrifying. Oh and, yeah. And if anybody knows New Jersey, Route Nine, Elizabeth, it's a busy highway. Mm-hmm. And coming out onto that and trying to hit all the gears right and not run nobody over, it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I mean, you know, as we we went through all the testing processes and everything else. I wasn't a first-time winner. Correct. You know, most people aren't. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I took three tries and a lot of remodeling at the driving academy to be able to afford those. That's those. right, and we'll give you the details of that. <laughs> so it's a really good story. Yeah. So, most people who come through the One Stop Center, the One Stop Center is for anybody who is underemployed or feels like they can be uh, employed itself, right? You came through, I think, DVR, right? Yeah, DVR, correct. Um, but a lot of people who come through there because they're not the one paying, they don't really pay attention. What made you different? Why was this so important to you? 
Well, to me, it was an opportunity, and I mean, just the fact that they were willing to take a chance on me and, and pay for me to be more successful in life, I didn't want to squander that, I, you know, because if I'm doing that and there's another guy out there that wants it and maybe he didn't get the spot, I, I owed it to that guy and everybody come behind me to do the best I could in this process. Have you always been that way? No. <laughs> well, what's, what kind of mindset have to, sh- uh, have to shift for you to be that way? It had, I had to grow up, and you know, like I said, I came from the halfway house, so obviously I was incarcerated, and it wasn't my first rodeo there either. I had to finally grow up and take responsibility for myself and my actions. And once you do that and you see the ramifications of them, you have to do the right thing. Because you shot up a, like a rocket ship once you actually started living in integrity and actually started taking responsibility. Unbelievable. And, and uh, your life just... Night and day. Mm-hmm. Night and day, uh, the Buddhists have a term for it, that the obstacle is the path. Yes. You, there's no going around stuff. For most of my earlier life, I tried shortcuts. Mm. I tried to maneuver. I tried to be slick. Mm-hmm. Doesn't, that doesn't get you anywhere. Mm. The hard work, the going through it, the, the actual strength you overcome from going through something Who you become? gets yeah. you farther. Another interesting anecdote, you know, the butterfly struggles to get out of the cocoon mm-hmm. before it's a butterfly. If you were to open up that cocoon for it and allow it out, it would die mm. because that struggle forces liquid into its wings, which makes it able to fly when it gets out. So without the struggle, what do you got? You got nothing. No, you got a dead butterfly. You got a dead butterfly. And we don't, need no <laughs> and we don't want that, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you were going through the course. That's where we actually met. Yeah. And then you went to go for your road test. You actually wind up failing your first test, right? You first, remember what you fell on? First, second. Well, the first one I ran over a curb. Okay. And that is an automatic fail. So. Automatic. But Even you did pass pre-trip and you did pass the parking. That was great. That was easy. And that was easy for you. Although the, actually the very first time was over here before I went to Philadelphia. Um, Raleigh. I went through my pre-check and I was waiting for the instructor to take me through the air brakes test. Because i never been. I was nervous. Mm-hmm. And she didn't say, she's like, are you done? I'm like, Yeah. She said, well, get out the truck. I got out the truck. She said, you failed. You didn't do the air brake test. Mm. I said, I'm waiting for you to instruct me to do it. They don't instruct you. Yeah. You have to continue through. Correct. I, was good. I made a point to tell all my f- classmates that because <laughs> yeah. so it was such a stupid mistake. Correct. Frustrating. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a very silly reason, yeah. but it, it happens, especially when you're nervous and not thinking too yeah. much. Mm-hmm. So for anybody who's thinking about that, in order to actually get to road test, it's three different steps. Step one, pass the air brake test and pre-trip inspection. So what Mike was doing, he was just going through one part of it, waiting for the examiner to say, hey, okay, now do the next part. Most of the time, they're not going to they say that. They don't know you have to do it. Especially if you're going to a DMV. Now, if you go to our uh, testing uh, site in Pennsylvania, where we did not have when Mike was a student here, our, our people know that you're a student, you're nervous, so we try to kind of guide you along as much as we can. Second step is the parking portion, and then the third step is actually driving on the road. Yeah. Right? So your second try for the test, you went to a third-party testing. Yeah, I went PA. out by Philadelphia, correct. Mm-hmm. And how that test go? Well, almost immediately I ran over a curb, mm. and I looked in the rear view or the side mirror. I said, man, that was close. And the instructor for me, no, that was not close. <laughs> <laughs> test is over. But he was nice enough, actually, to allow me to finish the route just to get some experience with nice. it. Nice. Beautiful. But, uh, yeah, I was like, damn, again. Yeah. So, as you know, back to the drawing board. Now, so, and then at that point, he was out of money. Yep. And he said, hey, John, what can I do to help you out? So, at that point, we're actually building out the driving academy office. And I said, well, what kind of skills you got? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so, he said, I, I, I'm pretty good at construction. So, he actually helped me build out the driving academy office headquarters that we're in today. And that's yep. where we actually became really close with yep. each other. And we were out there spackling and putting sheetrock up, and he Drop was cursing, sealers. and I was cursing, and it was a, it was a fun time. <laughs> yeah, it was. So I got uh, some of the drop sealing done by the first test, but it was even better. He went for the second test, and what happened? Failed again. Failed again. Failed again. So he said, John, what else do you need to get done? <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> and funny. At, at that point, we still didn't build out the whole thing, so I said, oh, we still got this to finish and that to finish, so now... Thank God. Third time you wound up passing. Third time I got it. So at that point, I lost my free help. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> uh, but we were pretty much done by the time he was done. Oh. And that's where we really de- uh, developed our relationship from there. 
Yeah, thankfully, I finally passed her. I would have built John his first house. That's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Would, without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no type of money that comes between us and you getting on your road to freedom. There's always a deal we can make, well, no matter what. Yeah, yeah, I tell you what, it was a big help. Because mm -hmm. without you, I couldn't have done it. That's I was true. out of money. Yeah. And then what do you do? You did all this school and you failed and... You know, you start you know, blaming yourself for it. So I, I can't thank you enough for that, man. Anytime, brother. Yep. So from there, you now have your CDL license. Now you felt, wow, now I can go get that crane, right? Because that's what yeah, you wanted that, to go. That was the goal. For people to understand, is a, getting into the crane business or getting into a crane job, how lucrative is that? And why do you need a CDL license for that? Well, one, you needed to drive the crane to it, obviously. Because it's uh, over 26,000 pounds. It's over 26,000 pounds. And uh, it's very lucrative. I mean, at that point, I was working for the roofing company in Newark. They're a union shop. So I'm going from, once I get my, my crane license, I'm going in A25 with a shop book. I'm in a union now. Wow. I mean, huge. Yeah. From the halfway <coughs> house to now union, and yeah. you're making some nice money. Yeah, and I picked up the, the crane license, the NCCO certification, which is a national certification. I had licensed by New Jersey in a fixed cab, a swing cab. I had passed the written on a tower crane. I didn't bother with the rest of that because getting in a tower crane is that plum job you ain't getting right away. Mm. I was all ready to go. I did one lift for the company on a warehouse roof in, uh, I guess it was still in Newark, just on the outskirts of Newark. That was in January. And in February, my boss, unfortunately, Malcolm, God rest his soul, he passed away. Mm. He was my in into the union. I don't know anybody in the union. True. The company was, you know, suffering a little. The, unfortunately, his daughter tried to take over, but she didn't, you know, it's a lot of moving parts. It's Correct. A, Malcolm was the company. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy was amazing. And uh, then I started working for myself, kind of. You know, they were going down out of business, and I said, well, I, I got a pickup truck, a couple bucks. I always knew roofing. I just I wanted the crane job so I didn't have the responsibility of running my own company and all the headaches that come with it. But I was kind of forced into it at that point. Do I want to work for somebody else and work my way all the way up again, or do I just want to go out and do my own thing? So at that point, you decided to do your own thing. I did my own thing. Now, for those people who are thinking about starting their own business, uh, is owning a business for everybody? Oh, no. If you want to have free time at night and uh, you don't want to work weekends and you want some personal time, then you don't want your own business because okay. it's all the time. Mm -hmm. you know, to, and not just because there's problems, but because you're thinking about it, you're trying to grow it, you know, and it all falls on you. Correct. You know, to, you can't <laughs> look to the boss and say, hey, what do we do? You're the boss. You have to. You got to figure it out. And when you're not feeling well and when. Especially. Mm -hmm. Especially when you don't want to do it. I mean, I, and then I, I was doing inspections for a while for the insurance company, and, you know, that was constant travel, moving around, doing a lot of stuff. But if you want it, you got to do it. That's right, yeah. You know? And we actually set up your business in the Driving Academy office, right? Yes, we, we did. We became fully certified business owner. Fully certified, set up our S Corporation, me and John, yeah. right under the deadline at a computer closing for the night. At Correct, yeah, 10 o'clock or whatever it was. That's when we put roofing in the company name by Correct. mistake. and. Mm -hmm cost me a bundle in insurance money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so you went from getting a CDO license at the driver crane, and then all of a sudden your boss dies. Now you have the decision, okay, you don't really have a job anymore. What should you do? You have the skill set, no. and you had the work ethic. No. Uh, so you said, okay, I'm just going to do it myself. And then we started working on marketing, getting yourself ready to rock and roll, and then the phone started ringing. The phone started ringing. And I mean, there was other things, too. I had to get a home improver and contractor's license. Mm -hmm. Normally, you know, old Mike would have been like, all right, uh, I'm going to put it in my girlfriend's name because I have a, a felony record, and it's not easy to get it with that. True. My girlfriend wasn't going for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and even even though I wasn't really suggesting it, I was floating it out there, she's like, no, you, you have to make your own way. Wow. And that application sat on my desk for like a year. Really? You know, I was still doing little jobs. I didn't need permits for this and that. And I was scared of it. You know? And then when I finally delved into what it took, I mean, I needed every piece of paperwork, every court date, every fine, all the outcomes of everything I ever been through put in this folder. Wow. And that pile was getting substantial. Mm -hmm. But there was also a side to it where, you know, what have you done, you know, while you were in or while you were out. 
And that pile was growing too, because I did a lot when I was in prison this last time. I mean, I did programs. Nice. I went through, instead of going straight home, I volunteered to it for a substance abuse program, an assessment center, and a halfway house, which all transitioned me. Like, I never did that before. Yeah. I'd, I'd go home straight from the prison cell to the house, never gave myself a chance. Mm. So I had made a lot of, I wouldn't say connections, but friends or people like counselors that would write a recommendation for me. Nice. You know, and those piled up. Almost, you know, it was close. Nice. They weren't as big as the <laughs> negative, but it showed that it wasn't all negative, that, you know, I had actually been working on something where I'd never done that before. So we shipped it out. I actually didn't even ship it out. I brought it to the office in Newark. The attorney general is the one that oversees this. Oh, wow, okay. You know, already, that's scary. Yes. <laughs> And I dropped it off and I waited. And then I was waiting for a denial, actually, because mm -hmm. my friend had been through it. And he has a record not as substantial as I had, but he had to go through the denial. He had to show more paperwork. He had to do some things. But you did your homework up front. You kind of. I think I did. Yeah. And then that, I remember I was in the lobby of my building, the elevator's there. And then you go down and there's all the mailboxes. And I seen it. It comes in a little tearaway envelope like, you know, most government documents do. And I seen that license, boy, that's the one day I knew for a fact that anything I've done in the past has no bearing on my future. Amen. That's what I do now. And ever since then, that's how I live. What I do now and how I act and how I behave dictates everything in my life. And I'm a big proponent of that, too. And we've seen people coming into the school with crazy pasts. Right. And we always tell people, hey, it doesn't matter who you were in the past. No. That doesn't that doesn't necessarily determine your no. future. No, not at all. It has no bearing on it. Zero. I mean, I can't be a, a lawyer or a judge. Or, I don't want to own a gun. But, but other make, than those three things, you make more money than lawyers and judges I, now. I actually do. <laughs> 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 and some doctors. Exactly right. You know, <laughs> and I'm just a roofer for crying out loud. It's crazy. Simple. Yeah, simple process. And that fear of possible rejection kept you back for about a year. You said. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I. I <laughs> I, I, in a way, I guess I was trying to avoid what I knew I might have to go through, which mm -hmm. was more struggle, more obstacle. And I just was afraid of being rejected, mm -hmm. you know, because I felt like I had accomplished this. And that still happens in this world. Like, you can't run an Airbnb. Oh, you can't? No. Mm. Kind of crazy, right? <laughs> I remember when I got the letter back from him, we were not interested in you partaking in our service. I'm like, are you kidding me? Wow. Okay. <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah. So, I mean, people still want to judge you on that. And you know but you're what? not going to be a victim over it either. I'm not going to be a victim, no. We just rent a penthouse now instead of Airbnb. Exactly. So, amen to that. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> so we went through that. You got, you, you, your business started picking up steam. Yeah. Uh, you had some really, really good years. Some great years. Uh, and things are moving, moving really, really well there. Yeah. What kind of mindset should somebody have as... So what, that's where we get a lot of people get their CDL license, then they'll start working for somebody, then they'll start their own uh, uh, start their own company, nah. and then start making a lot of money that they've never done before, and then something starts rattling and they fall down. What has been able to keep you in check where you're building that foundation so you don't take that deep down dive? Well, I've had that happen because I've had companies when I was younger, 19, 20 years old, and I made that money. And then you, it, for some reason, it's crazy. You feel like, oh, I don't have to work no more. Mm. But you have to work. You have to work even more to protect it. Correct. You know, if you start delegating everything and you're spending your days having lunch or going on vacation thinking I'm that guy now, you're not going to be that guy anymore. You have to be hands-on. I still, even though I'm making a ton of money, I'm on the roof sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting every customer. I'm overlooking every single job. I mean, it you can't take that shit for granted because it'll be taken from you yeah. easily, quickly. And people get that. I, I did it when I was 19. It was ridiculous. I, I got made all this money and I didn't work for like three months. I sent the guys out. They destroyed the company in three wow. months. So I know, I know from past experience not to do that. So for people who are going through the first time, just stay hungry, I guess is the biggest always, thing. Like, always. Always. Should yeah. they be go buying bullshit stuff? Now nah, you know, no. you buy that stuff right away. What, what, what about when you need something for the company? Mm. You know, you wait, you wait, because when you get it, it's going to be worth it. Okay. The, the rule of thumb is you should always ha have enough cash to buy two of them, yeah. and before you buy one. Exactly. 
So, or else you're not living above your means type of thing. And you're going to find when you start making money and having money that that ain't the root of it. It's the, it's the work, it's the relationships, it's the things you get from it. Mm -hmm. That's your real joy. You can, how many cars can you drive at once? How many pairs of sneakers can you put on? You know what Correct. I mean? Like none of that fills the hole. So if you're going into this thing and you still got some unresolved emotional issues or some things you got to deal with, concentrate and get them out the way before you got a ton of money because it'd be real easy to... Well, it's a good thing. It kind of motivates you in the beginning, but... Yeah. For you to keep at that level, yeah. you're going to have to, because after so much money, then it's going to be like you, all your needs are met. Yeah. So it's about what's the next step. What's the next step and what's going to fulfill you and make you feel like you're, you're actually doing something with yourself. That's fair. And now, so you have, uh, you, you went through this journey, you had an amazing, you have an amazing business, now you're getting into your third career, is that right? My third career is on the horizon. And what is that career about? Professional poker player. And Mike what, what made you get that in there? I tell you what, I've played a lot of poker over my life. And in some of the places I've been at, we play poker primarily to eat and smoke. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I, I felt I had the hours in that a, a real professional poker would play just for, you know, what would seem to be lower stakes. But to me at the time, they were very high stakes. Of course, yeah. Food. Especially if you didn't have the money to pay your bill at the end of the game. Mm. <laughs> Things could get crazy, <laughs> you know, so... Having played in all those scenarios and having had an affinity for it and done well with it, I liked it. I, and I liked the aspect of it, the reading the people, the constant, the, the probabilities, the math, the everything that comes with it. It's very stimulating on the mind. Nice. So I don't find it boring ever. It's always a challenge and you're always learning and... And we're doing kind of good with it. Nice. And so if you are a poker, a poker player or maybe you watch the World Series of Poker, he has put it and manifested it down that this year he's going to be on there, right? I will be on there. That's it. Mike manifested. I was going to change my name to Michael Manifesto. Me Michael and my Man friend Lisa were talking about that. <laughs> She's like, you should change your name to Manifesto. Because everything you want kind of comes up. But, it, but you put a lot you of work into working it. for yeah. it. Mm-hmm. It's not you don't manifest it out of smoke and mirrors. Correct. It's hard work and mm -hmm. determination and planning and goal setting and everything that comes with it. How important is goal setting? Goal setting is huge. How do you how do you benchmark your success without goals? You set a goal, you you achieve it. You set another goal. That's a milestone in your whole career. What are some of the goals that you set when you set them? You thought they were impossible. <sighs> Getting that home improvement license. Yes. I thought it was out of my control. But through the process of the application, I realized it was in my control because I had done the things necessary to counterbalance the things I had done in the past. Mm -hmm. I, not that you're going to wipe it clean, but you know you need a little bit of weight on both sides of the scale. 100%, yeah. And, you know, and now as I continue to be successful, I'm adding more weight. You know, We're trying to do good, trying to help people. Just keep going. That's it. It's amazing. So if you guys want a roof, you guys know a good roof for here. What number should they call? 973-277-6940, Exterior Roofing Solutions. We serve the tri-state area. Perfect. Uh, warehouse, com uh, Commercial, residential. Commercial, residential, all matter. of it. Just tell them that you uh, you found them here. Well, tell them that Jonathan sent you so he he knows that you're one of the friends here. And this way i got to buy them lunch or something. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> hey. So if somebody uh, is in a situation, and they'll come up to you and say, hey, Mike, I saw you on this podcast, super inspirational. You started at a way, halfway house. Now you're a very successful business person. You have your life in order. You just purchased your house not too long ago, right? Yeah. Um, things that you're actually living the road to freedom lifestyle. I'm living the dream, Josh. And so what kind of advice can you give me if I'm still starting in that first step? What are the, some of the first steps I could do to aspire to be some, like somebody like you? I would say the first step for me was when I knew I couldn't live the way I've been living. Mm. And this was as soon as I hit jail, the county jail. And I said, I can't live like this anymore. I have to make changes. Then you start to do a personal limit. This is what I did. And they teach it in AA and A, but I did it outside of those parameters. I did just as a human being. Mm -hmm. What's my personal inventory? You know, where am I deficient? Where am I, you know, creating problems for myself? And where am I not taking the responsibility I should? Self-awareness. Self-awareness. Any company, I mean, if you go to 7-Eleven and they got no big gulps, it's because somebody didn't do the inventory. Mm. You know, if I'm out on the street and I'm still doing bad and doing wrong things, it's because I'm not taking an inventory of what I'm doing. Mm. I'm just running, running wild. So accountability for me was first and foremost 
and hidden what they like to say that proverbial rock bottom. I just couldn't live that way anymore. It wasn't who I was, it never was who I was. And I was maintaining it or had this mask or whatever fears I was afraid of. You got to face them. Well, your, your fears are, are, are way bigger than the actual reality of what you're going to have to go through. So you're holding yourself down. Mm -hmm. And once I started taking responsibility and growing up and understanding, I mean, I would look even so far as like when you get locked up for something, they give you a discovery. And it shows all your criminal history. Mm -hmm. So I was reading everything I had. I noticed I would always get locked up in like February or March. Hmm. So well, why is that? It, it's, it's, you know, if something keeps happening, it, it's a pattern. Mm -hmm. Well, what would happen is I didn't have a big family. Around Christmas time, as a roofer, we're slow. There's no work. True. I'm alone. There's the holidays. I'm depressed. You know, things mm -hmm. I could admit to myself then. I would look to substances to fill that void. Mm -hmm. Once I start the substances and you get on that treadmill, you're a slave to it. You True. need it. Yeah. And I wasn't one that if I needed something was going to go without it. There's no work. You need money. You find a way to do it. You find a way to do it. And it wasn't a good way. You mm -hmm. know, and I have a lot of regrets for my actions for that. And then I would run wild like an outlaw. And around February, it would be on me. you get caught. And by March, I'd be in jail. Wow. You know, it's just crazy. You know, it's this, this little pattern. But it made me look at other things like, yeah, in the holidays, you're alone. You, you, you don't have a family. You know, you got to deal with that. Mm -hmm. You got to work with that. You got to either make a family, build a family, you know, volunteer. Like sure. when I first came home from the halfway house, I didn't have my girl now. I was pretty much alone then in an apartment in Kearney. Around the holidays, I would volunteer. I would put myself out there. So I'm not just sitting in this room True. and feeling bad. Because when you're giving, you're not focusing on you anymore. No. And the, the suffering goes away. It's amazing, man. And this guy's done, he, he's a super modest guy. Like, he's done things where he would go around Christmas time and just uh, give people money who seem like they might be struggling around yeah, the Target. Christmas time. I mean, me and my and girl Target. would do that at Target. Yeah, and just, like, change somebody's life uh -huh. uh, with small uh, little acts. And he's done he, he's done a whole bunch of things. Uh -huh. Give out free roofs before for uh -huh. somebody who really wanted who uh -huh. really needed it. VFW, we gave yeah. a free roof, too. We've done a couple of them. We've given a few cars away. See? So imagine... Like being able to support yourself to the point where now you can support others. Yeah, right? it's huge. So self-inventory, self-awareness, uh, take accountability. Now, what's the next step from that? Just do the right thing. It sounds so simple, mm -hmm. but it is. Just do the right thing. If something feels like it's wrong, you don't do it. If something's in the gray area, you don't do it. I go from being on the fence to being with the ski mask on and no time flat. Like Mm -hmm. So I don't even stray in the gray area. Understood. And, you you know, you have some morals. You have some integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, you say you're going to do something, you do it. You don't hurt people with any of your actions, your words, anything. And what happens when you have that hiccup and then you fall back to your old pattern? Do you beat yourself up? Do you, like, how do you stay well, on that I, path? I wouldn't say I've fallen back into it, but, you know, as humans, we get angry. You know, we could want to say things or, you, you, you know, somebody hurts you, you want to hurt them back. You got to still stay that course. You still got to do the right thing. Is this right? I mean, is, you know it. What's your guiding light that keeps <clears throat> you in, on that path? Because I, I feel like a lot of people have that. They get momentum, and then all of a sudden something happens, and then they take a few steps back. That's a good question. I, I mean, I don't know that it's like a guiding light. I mean, it, it's definitely my relationship with my girl, Liana. I mm -hmm. mean, she's, she's a good person. You know, and when you stand next to a good person, if you're not one, it's very evident. Yeah. So even behaviors and actions and mannerisms, just even in getting angry over, you know, because you hit your head on the light in the hallway. True. Because it's, it's down instead of up. <laughs> you don't trash the kitchen. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, you, you, you have limits on yourself. And, I mean, it's... So change your environment is what I heard. Oh, yeah. Change so T take self account, um, take self inventory, become accountable, and change your environment change your to environment. keep your self momentum going. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and I don't, you know, I don't go around any places. I, I like they say that geographical. The only time I when I'm down the shore where I used to live, I go to a meeting. Mm -hmm. That's where I see people that I used to know because they're still in the room. 
Makes sense. You know, I don't. Mm -hmm. If you go to a barbershop enough times, you're gonna get a haircut. I don't go in old barbershops. Well, sure. <laughs> you yes. know, so I don't 100%. get in any trouble. Yeah. And you know, I don't like. I mean, in the past, I would think like you would see so on the news, somebody found you know a hundred thousand dollars in an envelope in a parking lot and returned it. And I would think those people were the Stupid. biggest, stupidest. <laughs> I would want to slap them. <laughs> but they were right. Yeah. Just don't do it, man. It's not right. It's not yours. I don't want nothing for free. You know, like I play poker. Every once in a while, a guy won't be holding his hand, right? I could see his cards. The old mic would have kept looking. Yeah. The new mic says, hey, put your hand back. Ah. I don't want an unfair advantage. I okay. don't want something I didn't earn. I don't want something for free. And that's what keeps you going. That's what keeps me going. And last question, is it worth it? All oh. this hard work, uh, you have pretty much built the life of your dreams. You yeah. have the house you want, fully paid for. Fully paid for. Uh, you have the cars. Multiple. Multiple cars. <laughs> yeah. You have a beautiful girlfriend, yeah. beautiful partner. Uh, a, a booming couple, business. A couple little chihuahuas. You got like, some dogs. I got some dogs. Is all that what you went through your whole life, is it worth doing it? I would go through it 10 times over to have what I have now, honestly. Wow. All the pain, all the suffering, because without, you know, you ain't going to make a chocolate chip cookie without chocolate chips. True. So all the things I went through are the ingredients of who I am now. Yes. If I take any of them away and I don't go through them, I'm not where I am now. I'm in a life that I couldn't even script it for myself. Mm. They say in AA they have what's called the promises. Uh -huh. If you follow the program and adhere to this, that you will live a life beyond your wildest dreams. You will have no fear or financial insecurity, and you will intuitively know how to handle situations that used to baffle you. Wow. I'm at that point now. I intuitively went, know how to handle a situation. Nothing baffles me or throws me off. You know, I get mad in traffic like everybody else. Of course, but yeah. When I curse the guy out, I say to myself, hey, what are you saying that for? <laughs> <laughs> you know, come on, stop. You know, you catch yourself. Of course. So, you know, you just know, man. And, yeah, you're not going to get there if you don't try to. Amen. Yeah. So I hope that you guys enjoy this very, very inspirational story. Uh, so I hope the main thing that you guys get out of this is that your future is undetermined. You have full control of how your future is going to be no matter what your circumstances are. You just have to take accountability, uh, make sure that you're making taking action and change your environment around you, and making sure that you're constantly in, in, investing in yourself. Because the way you've gotten here so fast is by investing in others and learning yeah. Uh, learning the skill sets to kind of sh shortcut yourself. Without a doubt. So if you want to live your life on the road to freedom uh, d with a CDL license like Mike started off and then he moved into a full-fledged uh, roofing company or maybe you want to stick in the trucking company world, we're here to help you out. So all you got to do is check out our website at cdldrivingacademy.com. We have our guaranteed training courses available where we can guarantee that we get you a license by giving you over 100 hours of training plus unlimited tries at the road test itself. Mike didn't have that package. Yeah, no, I did. <laughs> yeah, <it> did. <laughs> so as long as you follow this advice, get that package right from the beginning, then you don't have to be fixing any any anything at the driving academy site. That's some bullshit, man. I wasn't an unlimited <laughs> package. I was doing drop ceilings. Exactly. At midnight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I hope to get you on the road to freedom very soon. Again, check out our website at cdldrivingacademy.com. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, John. Glad yeah. to be here. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully, we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.